Hello everyone, welcome to Bio2, a lab on microevolution. Microevolution is basically uh, the evolution or the change of allele frequencies over time. And so we're going to see how we can quantify that using something known as the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So changes in allele or genotype frequencies over time is what we mean by microevolution. So so small changes adapting a population to an environment rather than big changes like speciation here. They're not unrelated topics, but we're focusing on the small st scale changes in this lab. Um, now, there are things that will change allele and genotype frequencies, um, things that will cause evolution. And some of them are adaptive and some of them are not. So let's look at the list. First of all, genetic drift. Genetic drift is the random change in allele frequencies just due to chance. So that is not adaptive. Gene flow. That is when genes leave or flow into a population due to birds migrating. You know, let's say we're using birds as an example. Birds migrating in and out of a population. Gene flow. So students confuse those all the time. So remember, drift is random, like a boat drifting on the ocean, whereas flow is like a boat flowing on a river going from one place to another. Non-random mating can cause changes in, in allele frequencies in that, let's say, organisms tend to only have babies with organisms that are close by. Well, organisms that tend to be close by tend to also be closely related. So then your genes aren't getting mixed up thoroughly throughout the population, and you may end up with um, changes in allele frequencies over what you would expect to see if breeding were random. Natural selection. This is the one that is adaptive. It adapts a population to an environment. So natural selection is when an organism is more likely to survive and reproduce due to its heritable characteristics. It might mean that it's fast, it might mean that it's camouflaged, it might mean that it looks more appealing to a potential mate than other members of the species. And lastly, mutations can cause allele or genotype frequencies to change over what you might expect them to be um, as new alleles come and go due to random mutation. So let's look at an example of this. So in Bio2, we're going to use a lot of examples of codominant alleles. So codominant alleles are alleles that uh, uh, both show up if they're present. So you remember when we talked about Gregor Mendel, we often talked about like big A, little a, right? So we had recessive and dominant alleles. Well, in this case, we have codominant alleles. So in this case, C, see that letter C right there? That stands for color. Okay, and, and R stands for which color? So C is the gene, the color gene, and R stands for red. Also, we have the color white. So those are the two alleles in this population. Now, there are th three different genotypes possible here. Homozygous red. I'm going to use these terms because you've had bio 1. I assume you know what they mean. If not, please refresh your memory of genetics for lab. So homozygous red, heterozygous, and homozygous white. Okay, Those are the potential uh, genotype frequencies in the population. Or not frequencies, but just potential genotypes in the population. So just to rehash, we have, there we go, now I got the pen to work. We have two alleles in the population, red and white, all of the color gene here, right? the fur color gene and the different genotypes, the different combinations of those in a diploid organism. Red-red, red-white, and white-white. Now, the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is written here. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. Whereas P stands for the proportion of one of the alleles, and Q stands for the proportion of the other allele. If you're using Mendelian genetics, P is the proportion of the dominant, and Q the proportion of the recessive allele. But in this case, it does not matter which is which, because they're co-dominant. So, P is the proportion of color red, and white is the proportion of color white. Okay, by proportion we mean, you know, total number of alleles, you know, so so how many uh, how many uh, red alleles over the total number of alleles in that population? That'll give you a proportion. 
So let's let's look at an example here. Which of these populations are in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? So we have two populations of horses. We have population A and population B. So what we're doing once again in this lab is we're going to look at how evolution by natural selection primarily affects allele frequencies over time. And the way we can tell a population is evolving is using the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So what the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is, is it is a null hypothesis, meaning it tells you what the data should look like if evolution is not happening. Okay, so it tells you what, evolu what, what the population should look like if there is no drift, flow, selection, etc. affecting that population. So population A has 36 red horses, 48 roan horses, and 16 white horses. Okay, so remember a red horse will be CR, CR, okay? White will be CW, CW, and Roan will be CR, CW, okay? So that means there are two red alleles in every red horse. There are There is one red allele in every Roan horse. Roan means red and white, and uh, there are... Uh, in this case, two white alleles in every white horse. Okay, so going back one slide, this is a roan horse here. It has red patches and white patches. Both alleles show up if they're present. That's what roan means. Okay, so what we do first is we say, okay, that means in 36 red horses, 2 times 36, that's how many red alleles there are in 36 red horses. So let's think about that. 2 times 36 would be 72 red alleles. And also 48 red alleles in 48 roan horses, right? Because there's a red allele there as well. Now for, for uh, white horses, there's 48 white alleles in the 48 white horses. And there is a total of 32 white alleles in the white horses because they have two white alleles each. So let me get out a calculator here because I didn't do this ahead of time. I'm doing this live. 72 plus 48 is 120 red alleles in the population. And 48 plus 32 is 80 white alleles in the population. And total, 120 plus 80, that's a total of 200 alleles in the population, okay? That's how many we have in the population. All right, so we now need to turn these into proportions. So um, 120 over 200 is 0 0.6 so so the red allele or p if we use the nomenclature of hardy weinberg is found 60 percent of the time and q or the white allele is found 40 percent of the time in this population okay so that's what we have <clears throat> so now what we want to do we know the proportion of of white alleles to red alleles. We now run these proportions through the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, okay? <clears throat> so if you remember, that's p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1. So that would be 0 0.6 squared plus 2 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 let me put a parenthesis around that, plus 0 0.4 squared, and that will equal 1. No matter what, it should equal 1 if you did it right. A lot of high school professors apparently, or teachers, uh, mislead their students and say if it equals 1, that means it's in equilibrium. But that's not true. That's not true at all. 
I'll show you how to tell if it's an equilibrium. So what you do is you don't solve this equation. You simplify this equation. So 0 0.6 squared is 0 0.36, okay, plus 0.6 times 0.4 times 2. What's that? 0.6 times 0.4 times 2 is 0 0.48. And lastly, 0.4 squared will be, oops, I put a line through it by accident, forgive me, but 0.4 squared will be 0 0.16. And added up, that should be 1, unless I rounded something wrong. Now, what I want you to do is compare this to the original population. So this population added up to 100, making this easy, right? This original population. So 36% of the original horses were red. 48% were roan, 16% were white. Notice that matches the numbers we got here. We predicted that if this population is not evolving and they have an allele frequency of 0.6 and 0.4, then we will see 36% of the population be red. We predicted that 48% of the population would be roan and 16% would be white. And that's exactly what we actually have for population A. So population A is definitely in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium for this gene. This gene is not evolving, okay? So then what about population B? Well, let, let me get you started on that and I'll let you finish it and you can discuss it in lab. Um, population B. 40 red horses. So how many red alleles are in 40? Once again, this equals 100 horses, right? So 40% red, 40% roan, 20% white. So how many out of 40 horses out of 100, okay, how many red alleles are in there? Well, there'd be a total of 80 red alleles in those horses. There would be a total of um, 40 white and 40 red alleles in the roan horses and a total of 40 white alleles in the white horses okay so add it all up once again that's going to be 200 total alleles um and so let's figure that out red alleles there are going to be uh 80 plus 40 is 120 so there'll be a total of 120 red and there will be a total of Let's see here, 40 plus 40 would be a total of 80 white alleles. Notice that that's the same numbers we had in population A. So I guess what I'll do is I'll go ahead and solve this one with you so you know what's happening. So we get the same numbers that we got before, the exact same numbers. Um... So we have 120 red alleles, so 120 over 200 is 60, so 0 0.6 squared, right, squared. Uh, anyway, I would write this all out, but you're going to get the exact same equation that we got here. And we know what the answer was when we simplified that, 0 0.36, 0 0.48, 0 0.16. Now, notice, we predict if evolution is not happening in population B f for this gene, then there should be 36% red horses. But in fact, we see 40%. We predict there should be, if no evolution is happening, there should be 48% roan horses. But in fact, we see there's 40%. We predict there should be 16% white horses, but in fact, there are 20. So this population, population B, is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Okay? So we are going to build on this in lab and go ahead and run through these numbers yourself. Um, if you're a little bit lost, not sure how I did that, uh, check out videos on Khan Academy on how to solve this. They may solve it in a slightly different way. You can use those resources to help uh, flesh out how to do this. But you are going to be expected to know how to do this. It'll definitely be on a quiz in a week or so. So make sure that you understand this and um, be ready for lab. We're going to do a simulation of Hardy-Weinberg and then you'll write a short lab report about your findings over this lab.